At this point, it's time to take a break and have a little bit of bonus material. Now, this is, strictly speaking, optional and not central to our story. What we're going to talk about is Taylor Expansion. Taylor Expansion has a discrete calculus version. It's not really central to what we need to do, but it is lovely. So let's examine it. Okay, so how would you do a discrete Taylor expansion of a function? Well, let's think. Let's say that x is a discrete function, that is, a sequence xn. What we want to do is expand about the origin using discrete calculus operators, things like forward differences. So if we know all the derivatives at the origin, can we say something about what happens later on in the sequence at xn? Well, let's see. To evaluate xn, what I could do is take the n-fold shift operator, e to the n, apply that to x, evaluate at 0. Okay, but we know from our previous lemma that the forward difference delta is really e minus i, the difference between the shift operator and the identity. So what I can do is substitute that in for e, and I have that xn is really quantity i plus delta to the n applied to x evaluated at 0. Now the binomial theorem helps us expand out that polynomial operator. We get the sum. k goes from 0 to n of n choose k, i to the n minus k, times delta to the k applied to x evaluated at 0. Now that identity operator, of course, does nothing. And what we're left with is the sum, k goes from 0 to n, of delta to the k, x, evaluated at 0, times this binomial coefficient, n choose k. Now this is starting to look like a Taylor series, right? I have the kth derivative of x evaluated at the origin, but I have that, that binomial n choose k out there. What do I do with that? I'm going to convert to falling powers notation. Remember, n choose k is really n to the falling k divided by k factorial. And that's it. That's really looking exactly like a Taylor expansion, but now it's using all the tools of discrete calculus. Forward differences, falling powers, all that good stuff. Okay, well that's, that's kind of cool, that's kind of a fun fact, but what could we do with that? Well, here's a simple little application to the discrete calculus version of an exponential function. Let's say that x satisfies the discrete version of the differential equation dx dt equals x. That is, it's its own derivative. But in the discrete world, this would be delta x equals x. So what is a discrete exponential function? What's the solution to that equation? Well, let's go back to our Taylor expansion formula and we know that because the derivative of x is x, all the higher derivatives of x are still equal to x. So when we substitute that in, we get that xn is the sum. k goes from 0 to n of x evaluated at 0 times n to the falling k over k factorial. Okay, well that's nice. That works out really well. What we're going to do is do that evaluation, x evaluated at 0 is just x naught. it's a constant. Pull it out of the sum, and what we get when we convert those falling powers back to binomial notation is x naught times the sum, k goes from 0 to n, of n choose k. Now, what are we going to do with that? How do we sum those up? Well, we're going to reverse engineer the binomial theorem. And what we're going to do is take all of those terms under the sum, and multiply by 1 to the n minus k times 1 to the k. And why are we doing that? Well, we're running the binomial theorem in reverse because applying that gives us a final answer of x naught times quantity 1 plus 1 to the n. That means x naught times 2 to the n. That is the solution to this discrete differential equation. Any discrete function that is its own forward difference is really the initial condition times 2 to the n. And what I really like about that is it shows off the relationship between continuous and discrete calculus. We're used to thinking of the continuous version of the exponential function e to the t in terms of its Taylor series. The sum k goes from 0 to infinity t to the k over k factorial. 
where e, that base, is really 1 plus 1 plus 1 over 2 factorial plus 1 over 3 factorial, etc., etc. But in the discrete calculus world, the analog is really the discrete exponential function 2 to the n. That is the sum, if you like, k goes from 0 to infinity of n to the falling k over k factorial. Can we do that going to infinity? Yes, we can if you know how falling powers work. In this case, the base 2 is really 1 plus 1 plus all those fractional parts which are really 0 in the discrete world where things are integers. This is such a lovely way to think about the relationship between continuous and discrete calculus. Now overall, what we've seen in this chapter is that calculus is really key to what we're going to do. Make sure you remember the basics. However, not all parts of calculus are going to be equally useful to our story. In our story, Taylor expansion is going to be the most important tool, and occasionally we'll use a little bit of discrete calculus too.